One common application of shell scripting is to uh, customize what happens when you start up your computer or when you log into your computer. And uh, to do that, it's useful to have a basic understanding of what happens, for example, during a startup or login. Um, we're not going to talk about operating system startup in this course. This would be more place for a system administration course. And that's also highly dependent on the particular operating system distribution. There are uh, numerous uh, conventions and they, they keep changing quite regularly. So we're focusing here on the user login. And there's basically two cases to distinguish whether it's a graphical or a terminal based user login. Uh, let's first start with if you log in either traditionally via a video terminal connected to a serial port or of the computer or via some network tool that behaves similarly in the olden days, Telnet R login or today almost exclusively SSH, the secure shell, which is an encrypted version of the uh, older R login program. Um, <clears throat> Also, if you're using Linux, the Linux terminal actually has eight terminal emulators built in, which you can reach with by pressing alternate, pressing and holding the alternate and the control key, and then pressing one of the function keys from F1 to F8. Uh, and then you can switch between these different simulated terminals. And if you log in there, you should, if you press, for example, Alt Control F1, you should see a login prompt. Uh, that also gives you a terminal login to your computer. Uh, a useful fallback if the graphical login uh, isn't available. If you want to get back to the graphical login screen, that's usually on Alt Control F7 on Linux. <clears throat> so what happens during a terminal login? Um, the login process itself is controlled by the login uh, command and the login command asks you for your username and your password. Then it checks the user database in etc password to find out not just what your uh, user identifier group management, uh, group membership and so on is, but also one of the parameters in the user database is which shall to start for you. And then it will uh, change to your user ID and start sh that shell for you. And it, there's a convention that if the name of the shell is replaced with a hyphen, that is to indicate that this is a login shell. So in argv0, the shell can test whether it was called as a login shell or not. And the behavior of reading the startup scripts differs slightly whether it's a login shell or not. Bash, if it's a login shell, will <coughs> it will execute both the... Com uh, shell scripts found in slash etc profile. That's sort of system-wide configuration. That's where typically environment variables like your uh, path are set by either the maintainer of your operating system distribution or in a multi-user system. Maybe your system administrators have uh, made some local extensions in there. And then in your home directory, there's a dot profile directory that will get full uh, file that file will get executed afterwards as a shell script. So if you want to define your own environment variables, for example, export printer equals the name of the nearest printer, or so you can do this in dot profile. If you're using multiple shells and you want to have different settings for different shells, uh, the bash will first look for dot bash underscore profile before it looks for dot profile. You can also trigger in there any activity that you want to happen at each login. I showed a couple of examples of what you might do there earlier. Um, <clears throat> if you then subsequently start another uh, shell, that will no longer execute .profile. That will just include uh, the commands from .bashrc at the beginning of the uh, cell, share, cell shell session. Uh, RC is an acronym for run commands. And this is under Unix, uh, commonly an ending of a file that contains a list of commands that are run automatically at the beginning of uh, some tool. You may sometimes 
call a shell inside another shell. For example, there are some uh, tools such as editors or integrated development environments that allow you to open another window and in there you can enter shell commands and you can decide which activities you want to do in dot profile and dot bash rc such based on whether you want them only once done at login or each time uh, the a new shell of any form is started so bash rc is usually more lightweight things in profile you can set environment variables that then get automatically inherited to other subsequently started shells but functions and aliases usually don't get inherited like this except bash does actually have a mechanism to pass on information about certain functions in the form of environment variable strings but normally if you want to define uh, your a set of aliases that's best done in bash rc such that it's available in all the shells that you execute Uh, things work somewhat differently if you have a graphical uh, user interface. Uh, graphical user interfaces on Unix have traditionally, since the mid-late 1980s, been implemented via the X-Window system, where there is an application that controls your entire screen and keyboard and mouse called the X-Server, and then different applications establish a network connection to the X-Server, and via that network uh, connection they send and receive commands pertaining to how to open a window, how to output information in that window, how to receive information about keystroke, mouse clicks, uh, other events, for example, if a window is covered, uncovered, turned into an icon. All these are things that the X protocol deals with. <clears throat> so if you have a uh, not a terminal emulator, but a graphical user interface, the startup scripts of the operating system will first start an X server for you. And then <clears throat> um, after the X server is running, um, the uh, system will, uh, the init system, this is the system that controls all the configuration files that are being read and executed when uh, the, the operating system boots, it will start a first uh, X system client called the X display manager. This is the X windows equivalent of the login process. It will prompt you for username and password. There is a number available. The original one was just called XDM for X display, but there's the GNOME display manager or the light display manager or a couple of others commonly used today. And <clears throat> after successful login the x display manager then starts a shell script called x session with the uh, user uh, identity and so the x session uh, shell script is kind of the equivalent of the dot profile file of a uh, shell based uh, login and then <clears throat> a typical x uh, session command will start up all the components of your desktop environment. This may include a window manager. That's the program that puts decorations around your windows so you can resize windows and move them around and recognize the name of the application running inside the window. Um, <clears throat> there may be separate desktop or uh, session managers that arrange icons on your desktop and have various task bars and start menus and similar things. Um, there will be usually a number of auxiliary servers started to help with various forms of inter-process communication. Uh, so there's, for example, an SSH agent where you can uh, deposit unlocked uh, secret keys for authentication with a secure shell command uh, or other cryptography tools like GPG have similar agents. There's something called a dbus daemon. That's sort of a meeting place for many uh, graphical user interface related programs that can share events with each other and notify each other about what's going on. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, you can also start up their application processes such as web browsers, terminal emulators, such as Xterm. Um, if you log out, um, most X clients are started as background processes because they don't really need to talk to the terminal. And 
usually an exception is either the session or window manager which in X session starts as the last foreground process so if you exit your cell sh cell sh your uh, graphical user interface session you normally terminate the session or window manager that terminates the X session and uh, when the X uh, session script terminates that causes the X display manager to reset the X server closes the connection terminates all other X client and then the X display manager presents a new login screen <clears throat> that's sort of the basic idea of what happens with a GUI login unfortunately the details are not very well uh, standardized and uh, in different uh, desktop environments GNOME KDE uh, XFCE and so on uh, details can vary slightly but also they differ between various Unix and Linux distributions that's how the people who package up an operating system um, tweak to optimize the the look and feel as they see best fit and they all have various hooks where you can uh, add drop additional shell scripts into configuration directories that then get executed uh, so you can take over or influence the login logout behavior two other things worth mentioning in that context is that the x server also manage two databases one of keyboard mappings and one of client configuration options um, <clears throat> so the keyboard mappings are can be updated with a tool called xmod map and <clears throat> you can pass configuration options to x clients with the xrdb command i mention these here only uh, some advanced users may want to tweak these even though more modern applications tend to ignore xrdb um, this has fallen a little bit out of fashion uh, there's two man, uh, man pages capital x and xdm that give a more detailed introduction in what happens when you start up and use a graphical user interface <clears throat>